we were pretty locked into the notion that we knew we were going to get a very good player. And it turned out to be, uh, you know, Justice. Justice John Winslow, born March 26, 1996. Back in 2015, there was a lot of expectations for today's feature. What made them so grand was his physical gifts far beyond most his peers and his potential versatility on both ends of the floor. There's literally no position Justice Winslow hasn't gotten a shot at playing. During his rookie season in the Heat's final game, he actually started at the center position for the team, showing how much confidence Pat Riley and the Heat had in their 10th overall pick and his future as one of the more important players in the team's plans. He played 78 games that year, the most he'd play in his 8-year career. His rookie year was highly underwhelming to say the least, finishing with 6 points a game, on 42% shooting from the field and 27% from 3 in 28 minutes. Devin Booker was 3 picks behind Winslow and from his second season never averaged under 22 points a game for the rest of his career. Kelly Oubre and Terry Rozier five and six spots after, and both are having career years so far in the league in 2023. Just imagine the Heat had Devin Booker to transition from Dwayne Wade. Believe it or not, that was the hopeful ceiling for Justice coming in. Not to be as great in the same ways as D. Wade, but a different version that had the motor, size, toughness, and IQ to be all the things D-Wade wasn't as a defender and slasher. With the 41% he shot from three in college, him having that skill translate along with the one scouts already believed in made him one of the more exciting prospects in the 2015 draft. And to think, at that point, he was still considered a raw player. But then, the 6'6", multi-position player struggled and struggled and struggled some more, leading to a dark place no one really understood, except maybe his brother, who spoke about Winslow's struggles internally with not having the career so far he'd hoped for. Eric Spostra remembers once FaceTiming Winslow while at home in rehab and seeing a guy he couldn't recognize. He says he looked like he hadn't left the house or shaved in weeks. Mentally, he sounded like a lot was on his mind as well. As Winslow explains, he was in a very dark place, somewhere he's never been before. After all, up to that point, Winslow was a star wherever he went. Player of the Year in his state in high school, McDonald's All-American, and recruited by a top three school in the country. He won a championship at Duke and played well enough that year he didn't need the final three years of his eligibility entering the draft as a consensus top 14 lottery pick. After eight years, he's played for four teams and his last team waived him a few weeks ago after signing him earlier the same day. He's currently out of the league and it might be for good. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunnick Bro. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Justice Winslow is a 6'6 all-position player that made a name for himself first in high school for being the most physically dominant player on the floor on both ends. He was tenacious on defense with his 6'10 wingspan and 220-pound frame. Add to that, he was as athletic as they come, one foot or two foot leaper, and had a smooth lefty deep ball to go with it. He started all four years at St. John's High School in Houston, Texas, and was on path to possibly being a first round pick like his father was in 1987. By his senior year, he averaged 27.5 points, 13.6 assists, two blocks, and two steals a game. He was rewarded with the Gatorade Player of the Year for Texas and a McDonald's All-American. He chose Duke over UCLA, Florida, and Baylor, joining seven other future NBA players, including the top prospect in the country, Jaleel Okafor. They won a championship that season, with Winslow averaging 14 points and nearly 10 rebounds during the tournament. He was also compared to James Harden and Dwayne Wade coming into the draft. Miami felt lucky he slipped to them at 10 and didn't blink on the chance to take him, leaving a handful of borderline all-stars on the board, including future Hall of Famer Devin Booker. Stunt number one couldn't stay on the floor.
Justice Winslow entered the NBA highly confident he would be exactly what the Heat were looking for, about to transition from their resident Hall of Famer D. Wade. Big shoes to fill, but if there was any prospect seemingly up to it, it was the physically gifted and unique lefty Justice Winslow. His rookie year, like mentioned, he played 78 games and looked like his body breaking down would be the last problem of his career. Turns out it may have just been his biggest growth stunt. Beginning his sophomore season, coming off a disappointing first, he played 9 games and started all of them for the Heat until an injury to his wrist sidelined him for 16 games. He'd return and show the team and the league his worth, exploding for 23 points and 13 rebounds December 22, 2016, then 4 games later, injured his right shoulder so bad he needed surgery to repair it and sat out the rest of the season. The next season, 68 games he saw, missing 14 for a strained knee and development-wise looked like he still wasn't completely the same player he was before. His minutes were cut by 10, even though he was a much improved shooter, just not reliable when it comes to availability, and things only got worse. 66 games played and 52 started in 1819, a career year for Winslow of 12.7 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, and 39% from 3. In 2019-20, he played in the team's first 11 games. The first three, his stats were 27 and 7, then 10, 7 and 13, then 20 points, 8 rebounds and 6 assists. Very promising improvement and about time things started to click. Then he injures his back in practice and it wound up being so bad he would sit the rest of the season. Miami traded him to the Grizzlies and it's been downhill ever since, except the glimmer of light he showed with the Blazers in 21-22, but it only lasted for 11 games. Injuries plagued Winslow's entire career as he slowly lost confidence and a sense of who he was. Start number 2, Mentally in a Dark Place Another huge issue that halted the growth of Justice Winslow was him having to deal with injuries mentally for the first time in his life all alone. He says when he initially had to miss all those games his sophomore season in the league with all the time in the world on his hands, alone in his apartment and not being able to do what he has been since the third grade, which is hoop, work out and put on a show, he began doubting himself, saying things like you won't be the same player when you get back, maybe everyone was right, you'll never be fully healthy, the team's gonna trade you, and everything else negative during his time away from the game. He attempted to cope by picking up a drinking habit to forget those thoughts, mixed with a partying habit where his brother says he passed through females on the Miami nightlife scene and began to forget his purpose. He lost himself in the alcohol, grew out his hair and beard, looking unrecognizable to his coaches and teammates as the time alone sunk him deeper into depression. His exact quote, I didn't know how to fill myself up. That's when a lot of the negativity and darkness started to creep in. Mentally, he regressed just as much as his skills without being able to work out because of the injuries over the years. It took stops in Memphis and LA before he found peace in Portland, having his best year since his second in the league. But then he got hurt again, this time an ankle injury that needed surgery and put an end to his Blazers season again after 11 games. I just was quiet, didn't have the same joy. They could really sense it, but it's one of those things, it can be hard to step in at times. Stunt number three, struggles on offense. Defensively, Winslow was solid, not great, but he usually guarded the toughest wing defender and held his own, even moving to the four or five, and defensively, he did a good job. But offensively, he was struggling big time. First off, his three-point shot was only ever 30% or higher three times in his eight years. This may have something to do with his shoulder and even knee discomfort, but either way, in the three-point shooting era, it's just not acceptable a wing shoots so poorly from deep. He shot 31% for his career, but didn't add much of anything else as far as a strong handle to get him in the lane where he's most effective, a post-game nor mid-range game. 
Besides rebounding, Winslow was disappointing across the board on offense, showing glimpses of a defensive stopper, but not consistent enough because he couldn't stay on the floor and build on his progress. All in all, Justice Winslow is at least a great advocate for mental health as a pro athlete and how not to deal with it by partying all the time, distracted by women all over, and mixing in addiction, thinking you're helping the problem when actually you're doing more damage. At this point, he may have seen his final opportunity in the league. At least he won't end up the player many thought he'd be by now. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. I'm out.